Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post now tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your post notifications so you do not miss out on future videos as I do insert giveaways in them randomly. For today's video, I am bringing you guys a new product review and I'm going to be swatching these colors for you guys as well. I am talking about the Model 1's acrylic. They are an affordable brand. Um, definitely beginner friendly. I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on this product. As you guys know, I do not filter my reviews. I want to be straight up with you guys and I am definitely not going to recommend a product that I absolutely do not like. So if you guys are interested in watching this video, I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm also going to be doing a really simple fall design for you guys. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Getting right into today's video, I am going to be swatching a set of acrylic powders from Model 1's. And this is going to be just a quick little swatch video. I have more colors that I'm going to be swatching for you guys at a later time. So we're starting off with this really bright neon yellow. It is the number 36. We have number 37, which is more of a pastel yellow. Number 44, this is like a muted green. It's kind of bright, but more on the muted side. Number 43 is a really pretty light purple. We got number 59, which is a pink with some mylar chunks in it. Number 51, which is another really pretty pastel purple. Number 34, another purple, but it's definitely more like on the pink side. A lot more opaque as well. Number 45, this has a slight shimmer to it and it is a lot darker. Number 31, this is like a multicolor glitter. It literally has a bunch of colors in it super sparkly number 47 is a really pretty shimmery blue definitely more glitter than anything number 33 is a really pretty muted orange perfect for pastel nails we have number 49 and it is a super glittery pink color we got number 38 pastel green it's almost like a pastel teal actually it's really pretty number 35 we have a really pretty green perfect for st patrick's even for christmas number 50 is a really pretty shimmery brown color it's like a bronze color i would say number 46 it's a glittery green. Number 53. This is one of my favorites. I love glitter and it's like an iridescent. More on the yellow tones. Number 58. And it's a peachy pink with some mylar chunks in it. And then we have a sparkly black color and it does have a little bit of iridescent glitter in it as well. Number 32. This is a sparkly red perfect for some Christmas nails. Number 40. This is like a nudish, um, really, really subtle pinkish peach color 
We have this bright number 41. It's nice and bright. This is a really pretty color and it is really opaque. We got number 42 and it is a magenta color. Definitely one of my favorites. Number 48. It is a like burnt orange bronzy color. Perfect for the fall time. And this is what they all look close up. We have some really opaque ones, some sheer ones, some glitter ones. I am so excited to be trying these out for you guys. Now I am going to be using some of those products for this design. I am going in and I'm using my Not Polish number 12 brush. And then I'm using my Profiles Backstage Liquid Monomer. I decided to use these products with this acrylic because it's what I use and I've used with all of my other acrylics. So I wanted to use that in comparison to what I normally use. So I'm going in and I placed a small bit of uh, that brown shimmery color onto the tip of the nail and I'm trying to blend that out. I don't know if you guys can tell or not, but the consistency of this powder is a lot thicker. It's not as blendable and you'll be able to tell whenever I place this yellow color. I'm trying to marbleize that and normally I do that very easily. But as you can see, this is not moving. It's kind of just chilling right there, which is, it's fine. The consistency is just thicker, which just means you have to work with the wetter beads. Um, and then kind of try to work fast. Obviously, it's going to set a lot faster. So you do want to make sure you're working rather quickly and with a very damp brush. So I'm just trying to blend that out. And then I'm adding some of that iridescent glitter just kind of to give it a little bit of an accent. And then I'm going to be placing that same glitter on the natural nail or what would be the natural nail. And then kind of just blending that out as well. So I do really like the colors. They are absolutely beautiful. Um, that is definitely said without a doubt. I'm going in on the ring finger and applying that same glitter. I originally wanted to place it on the entire nail and then I thought I would leave some of it clear just because I knew I wanted to add more nail art to it and I didn't want the glitter to overpower the nail art. So I'm just going ahead and blending that up into the cuticle area because I am going to be adding just a little bit more where the natural nail bed would be. And then I'm kind of blending it down towards the tip to kind of give an ombre effect and it not fully cover the nail. So now I'm going to be placing this really pretty yellow onto my middle finger and I am just going to be leaving that um, just simple, just yellow. So I am placing a medium sized bead of acrylic on that middle section as I typically do with my acrylic process and then blending it out towards the tip. So I don't know if you guys could tell but for the most part the consistency is a lot thicker than what you guys are used to seeing me use which is absolutely fine. The only thing that I would definitely recommend you guys do is work with a wetter bead. It will soften it up and you'll have a little bit more time to work with the product. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish applying that onto the middle finger. I do recommend this for any beginner nail tech that you're just wanting to stock up on colors. I believe it's really inexpensive, um, so it is, you know, budget friendly. I will say that I'm going to kind of reference something that has nothing to do with nails so you guys can kind of get a picture. So I actually started doing nails with a 
thicker consistency of a powder and then when I switched over to like say not polish or products like that I realized how much easier it was to work with it so for example if you start driving and you learn to drive in a car that is standard when you switch to a car that is automatic it's gonna be a lot easier you're gonna realize that the steps are not as hard <laughs> but it is a good product I do really like it the colors are amazing the pigments in the actual powder are really opaque which I do really like as well they work well with the monomer that I'm using I will be trying it out with the monomer from model once to kind of give you guys an idea on how that works versus what I'm using in this video so make sure you guys stay tuned for that as well So now I'm going to be encapsulating these nails. I like to work in thin layers with the actual colored acrylic and then just add thickness and encapsulate with clear. So this is the Model Once clear as well. And I don't know why it looked extremely cloudy. I was kind of scared that it wasn't going to be extremely see-through. But then when I placed it on the actual nail and started working with it, it got really translucent. So in difference from the colored acrylic, you need to work with drier beads with the clear. I don't know if you guys can see how it just like melted all over the place extremely quickly. With their clear, you need to work with drier beads. And I'm gonna be showing you guys on the rest of the nails exactly what I'm talking about. So on my ring finger, as you can see, I'm applying that bead of acrylic and it seems fine. And then all of a sudden it's like, boop, oh, you got to work fast. Come on, come catch me. <laughs> I thought it was so funny because like I already knew from when I did the pinky, like I already knew you have to work with dryer beads. So when it happened again, I was like, oh, you just don't learn. So definitely opposite colored acrylics from model ones. You want to work wetter and then the clear, definitely drier. I did blot the back of my brush on my napkin just to kind of soak up a little bit of that monomer and you can definitely work with it a lot easier. So that's kind of a little side note to pick up your bead as you regularly would and then just kind of tap your brush lightly on your napkin and that will remove some of that excess monomer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let you guys watch the rest of this process.
Now I'm going in and I'm going to be doing my filing process. I am using my rechargeable nail file from Kiara Sky. I have the speed at about 8,000 RPMs. And then I'm using my five in one bit for this step. I freaking love this because it's nice and tapered towards the tip, which makes it super easy to go around the cuticle area. And then you can use the rest of that bit for the filing on the surface of the nail. That's basically what I like to do. And it has saved me so much time from having to switch bits back and forth. Once I'm done lightly smoothing out the surface with my e-file, I am going in with my hand file and I'm using my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file. And I'm going in and just making sure that the sides are nice and straight, trying to perfect that shape. And then I'm lightly going over the surface of the nail as well, just to kind of ensure that the transition from the cuticle area down to the tip is nice and flush. And I want it to be as straight as possible. Sometimes you can apply a little bit too much pressure with your e-file and create ridges. So I'm just going in and making sure that all of that is nice and smooth. Now I am turning around the hand to look at the nails from the client's perspective and then I am filing the shape into perfection. This is where you're going to be able to see any mess ups, any ridges, any slanting of the nail that you will have to fix at this point. Now I did lightly dust off any dust and then I'm going in with my lint free wipe and some swipe and just cleansing the surface of the nail and prep for my top coat and any nail art that I may be applying and then I go ahead and clean off my practice hand as well. Now I am going to be doing some decals for today's set. I think this is a great alternative. I did get these from Heart Glam and I do have a discount code with them if you guys are interested in checking them out. Tons and tons of options and they're all so freaking cute. So I did decide to go with some fall leaves. I'm going to be throwing a sunflower in there, an acorn, 
and I'm basically going to be kind of bunching them up in that middle section of the nail. I didn't really know what to do with them and then I kind of just envisioned it. I tried placing them in there to see what it would look like and I did really like the placement of it so I'm just going in and kind of randomly placing those. Um, you can use different ones. You can use all leaves. You can use all flowers but I wanted to do a little mixture of all of them in time for fall. So all you have to do with the decals is take them off of the little paper and then place them on the nail and firmly press it down. And they don't move if they are good quality. As you can see, I'm not struggling with them at all whatsoever. So for this one, I kind of just looked at the placement and it had the little stem part of it. And I don't like to overlap my stuff that goes on top of the nail surface. I don't like to overlap it too much because you definitely don't want any part of it um, getting stuck on anything. So I want it to be as flat as possible on the nail. So if you are going to be layering them, I do suggest you guys just cut off the part that would technically be under the other little design. So that's kind of just a little tip. Um, then firmly just press everything down and then go in with your top coat. I am going in with my not polished glosset for this step and I'm just applying a thin layer over the surface of the nail. I'm going to be doing them all shiny. I'm trying to get away from matte for once. <laughs> and especially on the one with the decals, you can even go in with two coats. I'm just doing one because this is my practice hand. But if you feel there are any little ridges or anything you want extra secured, go ahead and place a second coat on that when you're done curing it with the first one. And I am going to be placing that in my UV LED light and I am using my Kiara Sky rechargeable LED light for this step. And I like to place it in there for two minutes just to be safe. But that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time. Don't